Well, we looked at all of the election reports that were filed with ELEC. Wow. Wow. Your research is the research. Okay. Thank you. Peter. Mr. Castiglione, Mr. 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 Wait, wait. If you don't mind. You we have questions for you now. I'm, I'm, looking, I'm, I'm looking at this letter for the first time about, about three minutes ago. All right, so forgive me, and, and, and maybe I'm missing parts of it, but I'm just looking at it for the first time now, and you make some, you make some pretty um, direct uh, statements of fact, some direct accusations. And I'm, I'm going to speak, since you're the, since you're the person that signed this letter, I'm going to speak very directly with you, okay? Um, and I want to remind you that these laws that you reference in this letter are your laws. You were a member of the, the city laws. It's the laws well, of the city. They were laws that, that you distributed through the streets on a, on a clipboard getting signatures in order to put them on the ballot. Yes. They were then brought to the city council's attention once the city clerk's office had certified that you had the proper number of signatures and the proper uh, amount of time, right? Absolutely. These laws were, were laws that you either drafted or circulated through town in order to get signatures on, right? So you have a yes, familiarity with these earlier. laws. Yes. Is that Pardon? right? Uh, as, yes, as I stated earlier. Are you familiar with these laws? Are you familiar with the laws? Are you familiar yes, with these yes. laws yes, that you circulated right through the streets? I have them right here. Okay, that's good. Um, your, your paragraph about uh, Crivet and Crivet here, um, to the extent that they donated $500 to any one candidate, um, or two candidates that you mentioned here, mm -hmm. those would appear to be excess contributions. And I, my understanding of that law is there is a cure provision for excess contributions to be returned within a certain amount of time after an election date. Is that correct? That is correct, yes, Has that date days. passed yet? Yeah. Pardon? Has that date passed yet? 30 days from the election. Has that date passed yet, today? No. No, I believe it's Thursday. Okay. All right. June 1st it's dated. That, that uh, just to clarify, that's, that's the a remedy. So it's, a that's, that's the, it's a potential that's, violation. That's the remedy once a violation is you gotta go. uh, it's a, identified. It's a, cure, it's a cure for an excess contribution. Yes. Right? Okay. So, and what, what is the contribution limit? Is it? It says, if I may read to you, it says, a recipient of a contract for professional services or extraordinary unspecified dollar services amount. Dollar amount. may cure a violation of Section 1 of this ordinance if within 30 days after the general election, which follows the date of the contribution, the contract recipient notifies the municipality in writing and seeks and receives reimbursement of the contribution from the recipient Mr. of such Kessie excess Leon, let me just stop you there. I'm, I'm going to concede for, for, the, for purposes of our discussion tonight that Crivet and Crivet falls within the ambit of that law. Okay? What's okay. the contribution limit that Crivet and Crivet can give under the law? Crivet and Crivet currently has a contract with the uh, City of Hoboken, so the limit, that the law applies to them. Mr. So the Mr. limit is zero. No. Oh, four, you're, 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 you're frightening me. You're frightening me. I think These are mistaken. your laws. These are your laws. Think Mr. Camerano has... Uh, please, please. Mr. Camerano, let him continue. I, uh, but let Mr. Camerano continue on this because, you know, things are happening here. Yeah. Yeah, things are happening here. We got somebody making allegations, and now he's being refuted. And sometimes they don't make allegations. Yeah. When it happens. And sometimes you're bringing out certain things, and you're not bringing out other things. So here we go, James. Council President. Go ahead. So, if, if I may, if I may respond. What is the dollar limit on a contribution from from this professional service? Contract? Section one, paragraph B, says that no business entity who submits a proposal for enters into negotiations for or agrees to any contract or agreement with the city of Hoboken or any of its departments or instrumentalities and so on, shall knowingly solicit or make any contribution. That is the developer portion of the... No, that's the public contracting reform ordinance that I'm reading from. There's very similar language in the redeveloper one. You are correct. Right. Okay. That's the 2007 ordinance. Yes. That's correct. That's the one that was passed when, when, when do you, are four you months ago in February. And are you aware of when the Crivet and Crivet contract was awarded? It was awarded in July, 20, uh, in July 2006 and runs until July of 2007, so it's okay. currently in effect. Okay. So could, could I, I, don't, I don't want to even make it a question because we're, 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 we're running around in circles here, but just so that you know, Mr. Castiglione, no law, whether it's a local ordinance a county ordinance, a state statute, a federal, a federal statute, can apply retroactively. 
So if that contract was awarded prior to the enactment of that ordinance, it has no, it has no effect on that contractor for purposes of that contract. Okay, that's number one. Well, if, if there's some question about that, perhaps that's something for the corporate counsel to, to look into. But I'm, I'm, I have to say that's not my reading I will, of, of the I language. I will defer to his judgment, but I can, I can tell you that there's no such thing as a law that can apply retroactively. It's, it's just, it's not the case. Secondly, the, the re, just the, I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to ask questions about, right. um, you know, what if someone did this? What if somebody did that? Again, I'm going to speak very directly to you. This, this, this paragraph two regarding the redeveloper pay to play, you bring up a, you bring up a contribution by, um, by Michael Barry of $4,600. You say in the next breath, that you've looked at everyone's ELEC reports that was a candidate in the May 8th municipal election, right? You looked at all of their ELEC reports. The ones that were filed back in May, yes. Okay. Are you aware, based on your investigation, that another designated redeveloper, besides Mr. Barry, fully financed two council candidacy campaign? Are you aware of that? Uh, why, and if you're aware of it, why is it not in this letter? Why are you pointing out $4,600 and not the tens or hundreds of thousands in contributions that are equally a, a, a violation if your interpretation of that law is to be believed? Where are they in this letter? My, uh, our, our investigation of the uh, uh, reports, the ELEC filings that were reported in our uh, our findings are based on the ELEC reports I, that are online. I, I heard you. You read all the ELEC reports. Yes. Are you aware, based on, excuse me, excuse me, are you aware, based on your investigation, which I'm sure was thorough, of all these ELEC reports, that a redeveloper in the, in the city of Hoboken, a designated redeveloper, completely financed two council candidates' campaigns? Are you, are you aware of that? If you were not, you're aware of it now. I tied. I will go back and relook at the elect reports and see good if idea. we missed something. Good idea. And if that's the case, I think very good idea. If that's the case, Mr. Castiglione, yeah. we will refile a very good uh, idea. We, we will we will amend, amend the letter. But Mr. Castiglione, okay. I just want I, I want to leave you with this. I just want to leave you with this. I don't want to wrap it up. Point. I want to get home to to your my, baby, my, to my wife and my baby. But <laughs> it, the, the, it is conspicuously absent in this letter what I just described to you. It's thank conspicuously you. absent. Thank you, thank okay. you. And, and frankly, it draws not only your own credibility into question for signing this. What they believe in. You, you draw into, into question the credibility and, and the entire purpose of the people for open government. Right. What is the people for open government if they're going to split hairs as to which candidate violated, which didn't, well, what, what we haven't scales? split hairs. We looked at all candidates. We looked at candidates that won. We looked at candidates that lost. We looked at candidates that are in runoffs and, and those that are not. And we listed every single violation. Okay. We weren't picking anyone out. Very well. And the last point I will make is that the public contracting reform ordinance that you mentioned previously, the one that passed in 2007, is an update of another one that was passed by referendum. Right. And the clause that you're referring to does exist in the previous ordinance. So the issue about being grandfathered in the previous is, the, the not, uh, is, is taken care of by the previously existing ordinance. This ordinance has a dollar limitation on contributions. Yes. The dollar limitation in the previous ordinance is not zero. Correct. Okay. It's not zero. Um, All right. We'll, how much? We'll how much? How much? Is anybody, is anybody aware of what that dollar limit is in the previous We'd love to hear light from you, Eric. Okay. okay. All okay. right, James. Let's from you. Okay, let's back to the matter. Right. Thank you. This ends, this ends the public portion. All this.